Namaste Yogi, Veronique here with our side crow tutorial. It's a fun one, so come join me. I recommend that you have a block and a bolster for moral and physical support when you're ready. Come and join me on your mat. So before we get into the different dynamics of side crow and how to find it. I thought it would be useful to find side crow on our back so that you can get a sense of the shape. And then when we flip things upside down, then you can better understand the mechanics of the alignment that you're looking to achieve. So you can come to lay all the way onto your back. And then we'll allow the knees to fall over to the left. Maybe a little bit or all of the way. And then extend your arms up. You're going to find chaturanga arms, so finding that the arms are somewhat 90 degrees. And then we're looking to build a shelf. So you can bring that top thigh to the back of the left thigh. And then if you want to use both arms, you just lift your head and shoulders off of the ground and make a connection right tricep to the outside of the right hip and then bring the big toes together to touch. Hold here a few breaths. <sighs> Breathing into it. <laughs> it feels like it would be relaxing, but it's, it requires quite a bit of core. And then gently let that go. Whew, come back through center and then we'll switch it up on the other side. So allow your hips to come over to the left and the knees will come to the right. And then once again, it's like the ceiling is the ground. You're wanting that flexion into the hands. So for a lot of us, particularly in this modern age, this kind of flexion can be a lot. So just try to play with it. As always, nothing should be painful. If it's available, you're starting to lift that top leg, finding that connection, right tricep to that top, that left thigh. And then maybe you lift the head and shoulders, make a connection, left tricep to the thigh and then bring the big toes together to touch so you're in this twisted side crow try to lift up try to bring your palms as if they were standing on the ground and then let that go Whew. good and <laughs> roll out through the wrist let that go good so then we'll flip it the other way so now you have the dynamics of how the shape is feeling without also having to find the balance now we can explore the shape so i recommend having a bolster and a block handy something to replicate these props are fine as well so the bolster is just there for moral support just so that you um, feel like it'll catch your head just in case you topple over and then you might want the block to just lift your hips a little bit higher so all of these things are optional and certainly if you've been practicing side crow for a time you might decide that you don't need these props at all so you'll start on this little perch <laughs> and then we'll bring the hands over to the right so the knees are forward the hands are over to the right and it's that same shape we found on our backs so the hands are grounded on the ground notice with my hips at the height of the knees this would be impossible so what we really want to do is we want to lift the hips up and send the heart forward so if you're new on your side crow journey you're using both triceps you want to bring your right hip onto that left tricep we're sending the heart forward and see how my feet just float up and then we're here in this side crow try to bring those big toes together to touch breathe here a few breaths you might even rest your head on the bolster if you'd like and then come back up Whew. so in between sides let's take a moment roll out through the wrist so notice what happens to the breath, right? When we're like really focused and we feel like this is happening, the breath tends to get really shallow or maybe we're holding the breath. So really try this time to breathe as much into the belly as slowly as possible. And we'll switch it to the second side. So finding your setup, coming back onto the perch. 
And I'll just actually show you from this side um, without the bolster, just so that you can see a little bit better what's happening. So coming back onto your perch, you're bringing your hands over to the left. You really need your palms on the ground. If your fingertips are tented, it's um, not a very stable place for your wrists. Um, certainly if you're super, super strong in your forearms, you could do it like this, but if you're just learning, I do recommend palms planted, spread your fingers nice and wide. So you could have both arms involved, or this time I'll show just the front arm. So you'll plant your palms. We're bringing those chaturanga arms. We really want the arms to be at 90 degree. Spread your fingers wide. We're hugging the elbows to the rib cage. So everything's really like drawn in. The core is super zipped up. And we want to look forward. We're sending the heart through. Remember your breath. That's very important. And then we're getting light on the toes so that you can come into that perch. You might set your feet down, come back up, bring the big toes together to touch. Breathe there a few breaths. Good. So if that is going well, you want to break up with your block, you're welcome to. Otherwise, keep practicing with your block. Alternatively, if it feels like your arms need more length, you could have blocks underneath both hands as well. So feel free to get creative. Just if you're standing on a block or if your hands are on a block, make sure it's on the lowest height. That's going to be the most stable placement of your block. So if you're feeling like this is going super well, I want to play with lengthening my legs. That's where we're traveling to next. So we'll come back to the right side, bringing your hands onto the ground. I'll show also, because sometimes, oftentimes in class, sometimes, oftentimes, <laughs> sometimes and oftentimes in class, we come into this from twisted chair. So it might be nice to come from here, and then your hips are a little bit higher. We're bringing that left shoulder down. Try to keep the hips high as you plant your palms, and then start to send the heart forward. As you look over to the left, maybe you start to lengthen your legs. Spread your toes and breathe here a few breaths. And then stealthily come back, maybe landing back into that twisted chair. The other variation I'll show on the other side is this staggered leg. This is um, like Ekapada Kundinyasana 1, um, but it's kind of like a sister pose to this side crow. So, um, I'll show you what that looks like here. So coming either from twisted chair or in this tippy toe pose, you'll plant your palms onto the ground. Catch your breath. <laughs> Take a moment. If you need to stretch out through the wrists in between sides, just take care to take care of yourself, yeah? So how this will look is you're lifting your hips up. We're building that shelf. If your arms are super slippery, you might consider wearing a long sleeve shirt or placing like a microfiber towel on your arms just so that you can have some traction, particularly if your um, leggings are very slippery or if you're wearing shorts, that will help keep things in place as well. So sending the heart forward, bend the elbow straight back, looking out and then maybe you start to stagger the legs. So this is like Ekapada Kundinyasana 1, and then maybe you start to lengthen both legs out to the side, and then come back. So you can breathe there three to five breaths each side. Keep practicing it, it will come over time. It just takes a lot of repetition. If you're just taking side crow on your back, that is perfect. I hope that was helpful. Any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and let me know if you have any requests for future tutorials. Thank you so much and namaste.